All right. Welcome, everybody. We are absolutely thrilled to have you all joining us for this uh, very special BRM masterclass with none other than Mark Carey, who's had an um, absolutely incredible career playing with many, many legends of jazz, 
uh, including two of my favorite singers, uh, Betty Carter and the great Abby Lincoln. Um, and uh, it's just really an honor. And he's gotten to collaborate with Brooklyn Ragamassa, particularly on our Alice Coltrane and John Coltrane tributes. So it's just amazing. Uh, Mark, how you doing? Oh, great. Man. I feel great. How about yourself? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm glad to be with you. Um, so, uh, you know, you've, you've collaborated with all these uh, projects with Raga, and um, we're so excited to, to, you know, scratch the surface of, of some of, of, of what you figured out over the years about music and what you're still discovering. But um, you're such a, a master at just uh, getting your own thing going in the studio. So we thought we would just start with some, some music if, if you're feeling yeah, the spirit. I'd love to, man. Okay. Sure. Um, so uh, let, let's get into it, and then we'll be back with uh, your questions and uh, hanging and learning with Mark Carey. All right. You can hear that, Dave? I can hear it. All right. Thank you. 
<laughs> All right, <laughs> killing, man. Thank you, man. Killing. Hey. Wow. So, um, I'm so curious. You know, a, a lot of, of the musicians. Well, actually, let, let's start a little more philosophically. Where, what, what part about raga? What, how did that resonate with 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 you? And how did you get attracted to this this uh, type of, of music? Well, I can tell you this. Uh, I, I come from a very musical family. Uh, there was nothing pretty much left out, you know, musically. Um, I've, I've been exposed from a child to, you know, everything from spiritual music to music uh, from the African dance classes. My mother's a, uh, an artistic woman and um, she was, you know, we've tried everything, different religions, everything, man. We've, we've been adventurous in our, and we've traveled. So I think, you know, uh, the marriage father brought together a record collection that was about 25,000 records deep. So, <laughs> I, yeah, I grew up, I grew up exposed to like music from, from the islands, you know, Trinidad music, Calypso reggae, you know, uh, Native American music, you know, I mean, deep into the files. Um, you know, we, we experienced in Washington, D.C., where I grew up, born in New York, but I grew up in, in D.C., and they had, uh, they had a lot of cultural events that were meaningful and made an impact on my life. There used to be a festival called the Folk Life Festival, and it was it was done on the on the on the mall down on the Monument Mall, 
And you see every culture was there representing, you know, something from the culture. So uh, this was our, this was one of our summer things, you know, um, uh, and my mother was, was very influential in my, in, in my depth of music. I mean, to the point where as I was becoming a teenager and she saw that, you know, I needed some direction, uh, you know, she felt like she could influence some direction. Every time I would leave the house, David, she would literally make me, no matter if I was with my friends or not, she'd make me stop and listen to something. And she'd mm. be like, this, something like, normally she'd time it, you know, she just had something about her timing. And she's an artist too, so, but she would put an album on, you know, Duke Ellington, it could be anything, man, it might be some, might be, you know, Pure, pure Faye or something, or, or, or Buffy Sam, I mean, who knows what, 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 you know, Eddie Paul Mary. So whatever it is that she wanted me, she felt like I needed to leave the house with something. And she, she exposed me to like digging into the files, you know? Um, so part of my thing, part of my upbringing was a, a, a discipline. My upbringing, you know, there's a, quite a bit of discipline in my household. Um, so if you wanted to play the records, you'd have to have your chores done. You'd have to have certain things, you know, done, you know, so I figured out a way, you know, to do that most of the time, but then just figured out a way to get to those albums no matter what, you know, and and that's what I spent a lot of my time in that basement, man, digging through five, through, through albums. And I have some of the collection here with me. I brought that stuff along with me when I left home. But I think, David, um, the thing that attracted me most to raga music in gen general uh, is the blues. Mm. The the storytelling, um, you know, initially, I think, you know, in a practical sense, I was attracted to it because I needed more depth in my music that I play, music called, called jazz, you know, Duke Ellington called the music of his people. Um, I'm open to all kinds of titles for it. Like, I know it exists, it's in the ether, you tap into it, you know, but in, in a search for a, a, a more more depth, you know, in my ability to store, to tell a story, you know, not content. I wasn't looking for content like licks and all that. That's not the kind of information I was looking for. I was looking for the feeling, how to evoke the feeling you get from Raga music. And it took a really long time to understand that although we deal with improvisation in both music, you know, both raga and jazz. The uh, the reason for the the the, imp the development of the story is different. You know, there are different goals. You know, um, you know, I was attracted to raga music because mainly the vocal renditions um, really touch me like emotionally like you know crying and you know like just like you know full of emotion and trying to figure out how did that happen you know um i became attracted to raga music because of the understanding of you know uh from the greek you know and in the, in the, in the chemic philosophy you know the different modes you know the greek modes that we've been taught you know, uh, taking it a little deeper to Kemet, you find that that's, that was a way in which they taught everything, math, science, everything through, the, through you know, the levels, through the modes. Um, raga music struck me because it had rules. You know, there were certain things, you know, uh, unlike, you know, jazz, uh, a more 12 uh, tone, you know, 12 tone bass music, uh, raga music is you, you got what you got. That's it, man. You got to work with this. You know, that in itself really uh, charged me. It gave me something to work towards. It gave me, it, it also let me know you don't need 12 notes to make it happen. You know, five notes, you get pentatonic scale, man, you get some stuff done, you know. Most indigenous music. I think, you know, this is a big question, the big answer to that question. I can't just give it to you in one sentence. So bear with me. Um, the um, the thing about you know 
working with a set of notes and not not showing you the full deck until the the story is over in a sense mm. is is deep you know because there's a different motivation there's a there's there's a motivation to show the relationship between the root and the ether you know you're always conscious of the root because you have you know you have your tampa and and here we can hear it but the tampa is holding holding it you know so you always have the earth and then you always have the ether to reach for so as above so below kind of thing you know um i kind of got this this sense that i could i could bring something to jazz if i really immerse myself in indigenous music raga music being one of them um and then i met people that were into jazz and into raga music which you know samir gupta my good friend you know sunny jane um you know uh quite a few of the, the incredible singers, you know, um, that I've had a chance to be affiliated with over the years, uh, really opened me up to like the vastness of, of what's in between the note. <laughs> and, 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 and showing the relationship between Sa and Re and Ni, and, you know, and Ma and Pa, like that, that, but always relating it to, you know, the ascension. You know, um, I can go on and on, man. So that's that. That's where I'll end that answer. It's not over. Yeah. Wow. Well, there's a lot there. I mean, um, a couple of things that jumped out at me. What you're saying. One was that this. It's almost like a Taoist thing of of what's not there, and uh, how Raga, you know, will spend so long to tease and not not play a note. Which, uh, just in terms of pure timing, I mean, it's very unusual for a Western musician not to lay their cards out quicker than a raga would in terms of of, well, it's a different, of the it's ingredient. A, right, I think it's a different uh, objective. You see, mm -hmm. the objective in 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 well, I think you have, you're open for a lot in jazz. That's the beauty of jazz. Jazz is isn't one thing. You know, you have repertoire, you have history, and then you have the unknown. And you have a lot of things that you don't know about the history and a lot of musicians that, that went in directions and were inspired by indigenous music from other places. Hence, you know, you got Dizzy Gillespie, you know, and, and you know, he was, he, he brought, he brought Cuba here. I mean, like, what would we be without that, you know? What would jazz be without that that marriage, you know? And and the appreciation for the culture, <laughs> you know, that you brought in. So that for me, uh, being being able to, you know, go deep into the spirit was always related to gospel music, you know, or spiritual jazz, you know. Uh, I think it's all spiritual. I think what happens is, you know, it's, it's about the performer and the intent. You know, like you could you could hear my funny, uh, uh, my favorite things a, a million ways, and then you hear Coltrane play it, and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> you know what? This song takes on a new meaning. It's what he put into it. What he allowed himself, you know, how he allowed himself to be, you know, within that. So. Um, I think one of the one of the things that, that I want to take from my experience and in, 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 in really immersing myself in rock and music and Indian and culture is that uh, you know for the, for the music part I want to bring a sound uh, that's unique because first of all my instrument doesn't exist. In rock music, you know, there's, uh, I, you know, no I analog myself, synth, huh? No, well, I said yes. no analog synth. Yeah, yeah, but but you those yeah. are, those are, those are mono, yeah, those are mono, mono uh, lines. You know, there's no harmonic sure, yeah. instruments per se. You know, mm -hmm. unless Neil hits a couple of those uh, sympathetic uh, strings. You know, but 
generally speaking, there is no harmonic instrument. So, so the other thing that really uh, intrigued me was the ability to make chord structures that will always be within. You know, there wouldn't be a note that's out because nobody's right. playing. I'm not adding any notes and, and the melodies can, a, a note changes how it sounds when you put, you know, when you change the bass, first of all. And so there's really no moving bass, bass in raga music, you know. So those kind of things start to open up a whole other uh, journey. How to, how to keep this, the feel of raga intact, but also how do we develop a solo that's not based around a soloist? Because see, raga music is based off, around soloists. You know, it's a soloist music. Like everyone else on the stage is, is an accompanist. Jazz is not like that. No one's gonna wait around for you to develop a solo. You know, they're gonna definitely, you know, interject. They're gonna, you know, uh, they're gonna they're gonna play the song with you. That we're all playing right. together. You know, this in, on my bandstand, it, it, it's it would be a, a problem if someone thought they were accompanying me or anyone on stage. You know, we count that song off. Everybody knows what, how to count, how to feel. We know we're going there. I don't need to hold anyone's hand. No one should be holding my hand. Now we need to be socially distanced, man. You know, just <laughs> musically, musically speaking, everybody can think and they're autonomous in this music. Um, rock and music is a little different in, in that sense. It's it, There's a demand on the accompanist uh, to be that, you know, and, and you know, uh, there's room, but, you know, that, that, that comes with, with a lot of trust and, and, and familiarity. You know, on a jazz set, man, we just meet cats and all of a sudden everybody's doing, they're being them, you know? Hmm. Go ahead. Like oh, well, I mean, I just think uh, a lot of this kind of touches on some practical stuff that we could get into. So could, could you maybe uh, on the keyboard kind of illustrate what you mean about creating some like harmonies that are based on a rock, but don't, don't destroy it? Yeah, okay, so uh, that being said, I took it. I took Raga to. Uh, I had to ingest and understand what it is to play in Raga first, you know, and and try to wrap my hands around how to be expressive between my half steps. So everything I do is I got to hear it in my head, and 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 if I'm thinking it, then some of that comes through, you know, you get the feeling I bend a note, you know? So I had to figure out other ways to approach it. Um, so the blues is always my, my. that's the, that's how you tell a story in jazz. You deal with the blues and, and the blues exists in every music, you know? We, we, we put a form to it and we can get more into the blues. But for me, um, what I did was took the weight of uh, to the flat six. And from there, I built a, a structure of a blues based off the flat six. You can't do it on the, on starting on the side because you don't, you can't get your five chord or your four, the harmonies don't line up right. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Sure. So Tony, you. And take it slow for us. Yeah, Rob, Tony, you have side. So I took the weight and I moved it down to the flat six. Right. So just real quick, that you were playing like a first, the flat ray, flat second, no, major flat third, flat flat three, sharp four, flat six, and yeah. major yeah. seventh. Or? You left out the five just because yeah. it's always there okay. anyway, right? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so okay. 
So for folks at home, that's yeah, one flat two, flat three, sharp four, five, flat six, yeah, major so, seven. So I took the yeah. weight from 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 side, moved the weight of the rock down to knee. I mean to uh to the six. To the mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, here it opens up the harmony. So if I'm playing a blues, in a blues you have one uh, chord qualities. You have the one chord the four chord and the five chord. Those those give you mm. uh, a complete, uh, I would say that in that structure, a 12 bar structure blues, all right? It could be 16 bars, whatever you want to do. I'm doing a 12 bar structure, right? So I'm one, four, one, five, one. So my one chord, since I moved my weight to my flat six, I got, that chord will, will be a dominant chord. I could, it could be a dominant chord or a major chord, but I'm gonna make it a dominant chord. reason why I chose this rod because it has the blues built in it when you move it to the flat six. So check it out. Mm. Now my four chord is a sus, it's going to be a sus chord. So there's no, there's no th major third available in the rod on the four chord, based on, because the four chord is based on the flat two, if we were talking about side. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, so my flat two, I'm building a structure based off the, uh, a sus chord. My five chord. See what I mean? It opens up a whole other world, man. Yeah. You can't find that. Listen, if you're looking for the blues, it's right there in Rob Toady. All you got to do is go to the flat six and build the blues there. It's built in. You don't have to justify. That's all I mean. Otherwise, I would have had to put a blues scale in there. I would have had to. I would have had to go to the major. I would have had to go to to the key of B. And put a. Uh, uh, beat the key of B flat and, and put a, 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 a make a bebop scale. That's the only way I'm going to get uh, that flat six in there. You see, once I have that bebop scale, I'm, I'm one step closer uh, to getting that sound. Still, you got to justify one more thing. <laughs> you got to get that seventh right. You know, the only way to get that E is to have those three half steps. The seven on the one chord. Four, five, flat six, four, five, four, raise four. That's the only way you can, you know, you get that. So I, 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 I take rock and I go through it and I figure out different harmonic structures I can build. And then I build songs off of that. And, and because I do play jazz, I realize I can move that. I can, I can either build a structure on a rock or build a chord on a rock and then move that chord. You see, I can uh -huh. transpose that okay. chord up a fourth. There's different ways to think about it. You can play okay. in rock. See, that was playing in rock. Mm -hmm. That's no 12 tones. If I, if I transpose, now I'm dealing with 12 tones. Right. So, so I can play in rock, a blues in rock, and I can move that quality of chord up or forth and, and play off the same you know rod you know not the same key move the key up or forth you know and and, and play the rod up or forth you see well this is why i'm glad that you're joining us because you know uh this would count uh for people who are steeped in in the raga tradition this would count, I mean, harmonizing, like originally what we were discussing, just to be very clear, is taking a scale, a raga, and all the chords that we use, all the chords created are just notes in the scale. Now you're talking about taking the chords that get created from a raga 
and and you move them up, leaving the raga behind, but keeping the the original kind of structure. Um, right. So so whatever happened on that chord in that mm -hmm. rod can be moved. That same exact emotion can be moved up before. You know, okay. that's one can way of doing it. Yeah. Can you can you play that kind of so that we can follow what you mean or or you know maybe yeah. it would rise back. See that there? That's going up in fourths. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm taking this back. Yeah, so you you know, that's how we work in jazz. You know, like I work in twelve keys. I'm not just worried about twelve notes. You know, I work in all twelve keys. So I, you know, just to bring it back. So to apply that to an exercise. So I would take that that very those that's what one two three. Take those four notes and move them around the 12 keys, you see? move it around because this it, it starts to be an idea that can live in several different places so i do that with everything i i, I uh, take bits i think everything is in, every two notes is an innovation you know going up a fourth is an innovation all you got to do is the innovation would be what you do with a fourth you know do you add a half step and then go up a fourth from there and add a half step go up a fourth from there or do you go up a third and then go up a fourth? You know, so the idea of taking a step using intervals and to express. So the things I learned in Raga are emotions and the, the emotions come from, you know, how you show the relationship between intervals, you know. Um, and the emotion that, that, uh, in the journey, you know, the emotion in the in the journey from 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 sa to to ni you know re ni sa you know that so, that yeah oh sorry uh, well yeah i was going to say so you could um you know you're 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 exemplifying how you can take an idea and and go through harmonic harmonically but of course uh you could also do that with that fixed against a fixed tempura type drone, right? You're in one key, but you're improvising and taking an idea that may be in a rock base, but then you are moving that melodic, melodically kind of uh, transposing in a sense or... or... Yeah, you can, you can do those things. Um, that That is then, you know, expounding, you know, uh, or going out of the, 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 the rule per se, which we're already out. Once you put me in, we're out of the rule. So <laughs> I figure if I'm, if I'm in, I'm out anyway. So, you know, best <laughs> I could do is my best, you know. Um, but that's where synths come in for me. Synthesizers actually give me a lot of room for expression. And that, that's, that's always been my fascination with them. Uh, I started off with a, with a move. Um, that's why I got this grandma move right here, because it reminds me so much of the uh, Mo Rogue uh, that I grew up with. That was my first keyboard. And, you know, hearing um, hearing the, the, the way the synth was used uh, when I was growing up, really just, I mean, I, I, that's why I fell in love with synth. That's when I they, they were created in my era. So, you know, it's the sound that I know, that a piano exists 
for centuries, you know. Um, but I am interested in the development of, of the technology and also the how it's used and where it's used and you know uh, you know I, I love improvisation so I love texture you know that's why I built the studio uh, so that I could create different textures and and also teach these boxes how to do subtle very subtle changes to give me the illusion <laughs> that I'm playing with people. You know, uh, but also I can integrate this this sound into uh, any set um, because I can control tempo, you know, mm. and, and pretty much I can jump into something that's already happening. You don't have to sync to me, which is a cool thing, you know. Can you talk us through uh, and maybe uh, play examples on the synth of, of these different kind of emotions that you're able to, to capture and... Well, I, I, you know, I've captured. I don't oh, know. Okay. Music is real. It's real time, man. So you, 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 yeah. you know, I, I have captured in the past. I have the knowledge. <laughs> Let's right. see if it can happen. <laughs> okay. No, I hate. To, I hate to think that I can control hey, anything. No guarantee. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I just, I don't live like that. I mean. Okay. Uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. In fact, I have no idea what sounds I got up anything. Bear with me, y'all. Take your time. I think I'll By the way, if uh, you're at home, you can ask questions on Facebook. Or, uh... Sound good. Yeah. 
You never know what's gonna happen, Dave. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know the aliens were gonna show up in the middle of this uh, Zoom. Um, sometimes they do yeah. what you want them to do, and they then they don't. You know. Well, sometimes it's better, right? That that's the part I like. That's the part I like about music. The moment you think you're ready to go do something, it doesn't happen, man. You've already done it. Cause you thought about it already. I'm gonna go, we're gonna go, and we're gonna. I remember I told that to Abby, we were getting ready to, we were backstage, where were we? Uh, I, I believe one of these theaters, I can't remember which one it was. I'd be making something up. We were at a theater and I figured I'd say something inspirational before we went on the set, you know? And I was like, we're backstage <laughs> and they were like, the Abby Lincoln Quartet, I was like, let's go get them, uh, y'all. Let's, let's go on out there and burn. She was like, burn? I'm not trying for nothing. I was like, I was mortified at the moment. And even in the set, I was playing. And I, you know, I was getting emotional, man. I was like, I felt like I was connecting with the music or something. And she told me, she said, ain't nobody here. What? She said, it's a simple song. It's, it's a simple song. I don't know why you're trying to do all of that. I was like, wow. But it, I'll say that to say that, yes, it blew my mind. But then when I realized what she meant, you know, her name is on the marquee. It's expected that she's going to come. Everybody's going to have a good time. She already got all this pressure on her. Secondly, um, she was getting older, you know. Uh, her voice was where it was that night. If we sang a song, played a song in C minor most nights, and we got there and it felt like B minor, that's where the song is at, man. You know what I mean? It's, she's not trying for nothing. I'm not going to try for C if I go to B. Why? <laughs> Put the song in B. You know, so it was like, oh. And even she would sing through phlegm in her throat. Where other singers, see, that's what I like about raga music too, man. It's, it's, it's no shame in clearing your throat or you know, telling you know someone where you want the thing at, no one's getting pissed off, you know? So it, it taught me, you know, how to be more open to the music because you can block a lot of creativity thinking you're gonna get in there and do something. Man, let the song be, play the song and once, and things will happen. You'll find a space. There'll be a space for something really brilliant that you wouldn't have thought about. So I had to learn that. And I had to learn to, to, to understand what other people meant by I'm not trying for nothing. I, I was like, wow, I've worked all this, all my life to try for shit. <laughs> you say you're not <laughs> trying for nothing. And you sound so wonderful. That's what, that's what freaked me out. I was like, wow, you not trying for nothing is incredible. And she literally sang, and she's singing a note and it was phlegm there, she wouldn't stop the note. You hear that phlegm jumping around and until it just fell down and then bam, there's the note again. It's no shame. And Betty Carter was the same. You know, I see, I see a lot of vocalists that they, 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 they could probably sing even better if they weren't worried about how they look when they sang. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, men and women. But Betty Carter make the most awful faces to get the be most beautiful note out. So, hey, you know what I mean? Like, it's, <laughs> you want to see me look pretty or you want to hear a pretty note, you know, or the dopest note that I can find? 
And I mean, that's sometimes you see a face, you like, oh my God. You know, you had to go through a lot to get that that no. And and it's beautiful, you know. And then and then then the note, the beautiful note makes that face look incredible. You know, everything works. But if you try to make a you know, make a beautiful note with a pretty face, ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Intention. Yeah, man, you gotta get in there. You gotta get you gotta get dirty, you know, and 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 really op- open up and let let things be. You know, let space be space too. And I learned that playing with vocalists. And and you and raga music is really the key uh form for that. Like there's no room for nothing. If she didn't sing it or he didn't sing it, can't play it. We don't need any new ideas coming in. You can reflect, you could, you know, you can trace me, but don't give me something to sing. You know what I mean? So, but that's the difference in jazz and, and, and other forms of music. You know, Cap might be, you might be in the middle of your thesis and somebody might jump in and say, but I, I think this. And you might say, you know, something that's cool. Well, let's talk about that, you know? But you were just giving your thesis. So it's a it's a different forms uh, uh, and different intentions and you know approaches. Should we answer questions? I, I think we yeah, might. Yeah, yeah, we got one. Um, uh, Rupa Mahadevan was uh, who you're probably familiar with. She's a great uh, Carnatic uh, vocalist. Vocalist, yeah, yeah, she's awesome. She was asking, and she wrote, uh, "What's the best way for me to use these chord structures that we're talking about? Do I just move across over these uh, intervals and chords and see what comes out in the voice when I'm interpreting a raga?" And then she writes parenthetically, "Broad question, I know." Um, no, it's not. It's it's a very focused question because she's a vocalist. She understands rock. She understands that we're taking a leap and trying something. So. I would say that some of the things that really, music that really inspired me to even go check out like how deep jazz went into raga music was checking out Alice Coltrane, checking out, uh, uh, you know, Miles Davis, uh, especially when he did So What? You know, there's a live concert where uh, Sam um, uh, Sam was playing. Uh, Sam Rivers? Rivers. Sam. Yeah, I was thinking, what? I kept saying, Sam Woodyard? No, that's not <laughs> Sam Rivers. That's my man, too. Uh, Sam was playing on that live live recording. I think it was just somewhere in Europe. But um, I knew that these cats went and checked out rocker music when I heard that. I was like, there's no way. There are similarities in raga music, but there's also something about the approach to the solo, you know, the way he was developing the solo. And it wasn't like a typical, uh, you know, uh, solo where you pretty much play your hand, you know, in the first four bars, you know, and then everything after that, or the first chorus, and then everything after that is just the development of ideas in that first chorus, which is fine. It's just that that first chorus needs to really be deep, you know, if you're going to go in like that. But I, I was my point was that um, when I check them out and realize, OK, they checked out rock and music and this is a hip song, I started to realize different structures that I'm accustomed to playing on, you know, different forms. And I said I was trying to figure out how I can adapt raga to different jazz forms you know, literally merging the two like that, you know, not just taking the sound of rock and music and putting it on top of something, but actually using the, the rock to build a structure that's familiar, but with a different sound. Like that blues with that rock and structure, I mean, built on that rock, is, is, there's things in there that don't happen, you know, uh, without justification of playing the blues, you know. On west on a western approach. That's all I mean. Um. So I would say maybe try to do three chord structures, four and then four chord structures if you can find the fourth chord, which I'm sure you will. Um, but you know something that le- brings you back to the the one. You know, 
just so, so it has a bit of a journey. The, the, you don't have to, the chords don't have to be deep because, you know, we're really just using the harmony uh, for texture, you know, because the raga still is the raga. It's just how you're phrasing over it, really. Um, and really, you could, she could literally do what she does and allow, uh, maybe take a loop, an eight bar loop of what she does and, and harmonize that. It's going to be in rock, you know what I mean? Like take an eight bar loop of a phrase and then harmonize the phrase using only the notes in the rock. That's how, that's an exercise I would start with. Uh, that's a fascinating idea. Yeah. Um, uh, Arun Ramamurti, the great Carnatic violin player, um, mm -hmm. is curious. Uh, he says, for what, what are some good ways for a raga based musician to, to practice, to get how, how, how can they navigate playing over changes? And how, how do you start getting your feet wet in, into that challenge? Okay, well, changes, you know, um, not everyone, see, our room's hip. Um, not everyone knows what changes are, especially if you're coming from a raga music. That would be a, a term that is like, what the hell are you talking about? Changes is moving harmony, moving bass, moving harmony. Um, Arun, I would say one of my favorite things and my, my fundamental uh, teaching tool is the circle of fourths and the circle of fifths. Um, I would take a chord quality or several chord qualities and cycle the, the circle of fifths or circle of fourths with it. Here's one exercise, uh, dominant or major, dominant, major, uh, I'm going uh one tritone and then down a half step to the next fourth so one upper tritone uh the tritone will always be dominant um the fourth will always be major so starting on c Definitely work on my dominant chords and major chords. People would normally tell you to do work on two five ones if you want to start working on changes. The five, the five of five of five of five, or the five to the one, or the one to the five, tritone to the next one, to the tritone to the next one. So if we're going C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, we're going to put a tritone in between each fourth. We're going to go C, F sharp, which is the tritone of C. And it's a half step leading down to F. So C, C major seven, F sharp seven, F major seven, B seven, B flat major seven, E seven, E flat major seven, A seven, A flat major, like that. Um, and then start working on First, you could work on arpeggios, arpeggiating the, the, the notes in the chord and finding the leading note, one note that goes, that leads you down to the next, you know, arpeggios uh, to a leading note. Um, it gets deeper because really the, the science is you have three diminished scales, two whole tone scales, and that's what you got to work with. You know, you got your major and your minor, but the diminishing the whole tone is what structure, what, what all of those uh, scale structures are made out of. You know, um, I think one of the, the, the major uh, elements is to immerse yourself in listening to the music. That's, that's really 
something people don't tell you very much. Uh, active listening. Um, if you are uh, a rather musician, then you understand listening more than most trained jazz musicians, you know. Um, that's the other reason why I went to raga music. The, the, uh, the education behind becoming a, a master uh, raga musician has everything to do with true understanding of intervals and what they mean, you know. Um, what we're dealing with in jazz is really understanding that every chord uh, has an emotion. It's just like it creates a physical emotion and that there's no two chords that can create the same physical emotion. Uh, there's, there's chords, similar chords that are similar that remind you, but that's from a technical standpoint. What we're talking about is the actual emotion, just like if you were walking down the street at late at night and you pass some, you're about to pass someone, you might have all kinds of reactions. You might not look at the person because you're, you could be fearful. This person might give you a, you know, you don't know the person. So it's automatically, it's going to be, you know, it's a confrontation. You know, depending on the person's energy and yours, you know, could determine, you know, the thing. So identifying energy and emotion and being able to under, put emotion to a chord, you know, is really uh, the, the, the thing. Because this music is about reacting. It's your musical re reflexes. It's about developing reactionary tech skills, you know how to respond. It's a call and response. It's unlike what I'm doing right now. This is, I'm preaching. <laughs> but in the music, it's all about call and response. I mean, if, if Neil plays his chord, you know, I got to know what that means. I have to know what that emotion means. It's not just about a chord. It's about the emotion, you know, tension and release. Hmm. Sorry, uh, Arun. It's a long answer. Oh, well, uh, Rupa says thank you very much, and I'm sure Arun really appreciates uh, that that challenge. So basically, like he would just on his own be be going through those changes, or maybe record something in the background of of the that 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 cycle. Um, yeah, I mean, like, you know, he could record. He could do. He could record himself going playing. Just you know the arpeggio going through and then solo over that like right so you got that going on and then you go So you would you would put your root down and then after that you start exploring different ways. So don't think of it as psych secular. Think of it as spherical. So you're just finding different ways to work to connect the chords. It's really the journey in, in jazz, it's the it's the showing the relationship between chords between personalities. And to me, in raga music, it's more melodic structure. It's showing the relationship between the inter intervolic uh, uh, notes in the rock and how to create emotion from that, you know? The journey between the, to, to one, from one to two is deep, you know? So, especially in raga music, because you can bend and you can start, you know, you could start from somewhere else and then fall into one and then, oh man, you got all different ways to get to it, you know? And it's the same with jazz, with, with the chords. You're trying to show what weaves the chords, you know, what melodic structures bring you to the next chord. So that's, that's really the, the, one of the very strong principles uh, in, in jazz. Wow, man. 
when you were playing, I was just kind of regretting that we were talking and that we weren't just listening to you play. Yeah, I got plenty of videos for that, man. It's great to talk, man. You know. Yeah. Um, so we're we're closing in. I, I was, you know, one thing I totally forgot to ask you was, I had has the uh, rhythmic like tal concept of of raga entered your? It's the biggest part of it. I just don't talk about that much because there's so many things to get to before you even start dealing with that. It's just like even the understanding what is happening under, you need to know what's happening on top first. The rhythmic part of raga music is the most beautiful part of it. That's where all, that's where the jazz is. It's understanding how to go from 40, 40 BPM to 500 <laughs> or 300, you know what I mean? Like with the same structure versus this wide, then it's like this, then it's like that, then it's like that, then it's like that, then it's like that, you know? so. The understanding the micro beats, you know, and how to really make it feel different ways is the, is so so deep for me. And 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 you know, having people like Samir and and first of all, the whole Raga Massive, uh, all all the musicians uh, in in the community are, are dope, and th their contribution to you know this movement um, merging jazz with with Raga has been a journey for me. But just, you know, having the respect for both sides, I think is really one of the big messages that I would just like to leave. Um, because, you know, there's a lot of reasons why things are the way they are. And although something might be similar, the similarity is we, we both improvise. But the differences are beautiful, you know, and they need to be recognized more, more than the similarities. So. Mm. Well, that's a, a beautiful note to end it on. Um, oh, I'll just, uh, yeah, so, uh, gratitude from Colette Michon, another friend of our 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 dearly departed brother, Jimmy Cruz. Oh, my brother, Jimmy. Wow. Yeah, God bless him, I say. He, you know, he, he said exactly what you would say in his own Jimmy language, which was, which was each one teach one. Yeah. Wait, that's what he say to me all the time. Yeah. Wow. Um, man. Everybody left. Just a lot of people left, man. So, you know. Well, and there's a lot of people holding it down, and you are one of them. Yeah. So uh, we're very thankful for all you've contributed, and um, I think this this will be a, a real inspiration for many of us. Uh, you know let's do it again man let's yeah if, if anyone's interested anyway hopefully you know but I, i'll be down to explore more you know that'd be amazing yeah definitely all right, all right. well all thank right. you everybody thanks for tuning in thanks thank you Peace. Peace.